In this video, I'm going to address a question from Sue Howlett. Sue has asked, uh, Hi Paul, was wondering if you can add a password to a particular slide. For example, I want to set up two different branches, one for students and one for parents and teachers. She would like to add a password that can give the, the, she can give to the parents and teachers, but she wants the students to, to uh, not be able to go to those sections of the course. Is this possible? A tutorial would be great. I'm sure there's lots of people that might want to include this. Thanks, Sue. No incentive required. I'm always looking for an opportunity to create uh, new videos, and this is definitely an example of that. So we're going to do that right now. So I've um, built the basic framework of uh, what I think we're going to need here. Um, there are a total of four slides that you would need to create this sort of interaction. The first slide, and this is where uh, you're going to uh, provide students, well in this case actually parents and teachers, the ability to enter in that secret password which will unlock additional content so that they're prepared to help the students. I'm only going to use one slide for, for each of these, but uh, it could be as many slides as you want. This first uh, slide, or slide number two in this case, is my parents and teacher branch. And this is uh, just the first slide of, of what that branch would contain. Obviously, you could have many more uh, slides where you click next to continue or uh, you provide them um, versions of different uh, knowledge check questions, whatever it might be. And then, of course, slide three in this case is going to be my student, student branch. Uh, so, again, this would be the content that contains perhaps less information and it requires the student to figure out the answers, whereas with the uh, parent and teacher, uh, they're going to receive additional guidance on how to help their students. And then I've got slide four. Uh, slide four is uh, floor. Slide four is a uh, conclusion slide where the two branches basically come back together, and you know it either continues on with the rest of uh, of the course, additional modules, or maybe it runs to a final quiz. This, in fact, could even be a quiz results page. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. Now on all of these pages. Um, whether you're at the, let's say, at the end of the parents and teacher branch, you're going to want that next button not to start the student branch, but rather to go to that conclusion slide. So let's just take care of that right now. That's real simple and quick. Uh, instead of go to next slide, we're going to have a jump to slide, in this case our conclusion slide. And uh, personally, I like to disable click sounds and uh, add the hand cursor for all of my buttons. I'm quickly going to do exactly the same thing to this one. Click the next button, and we're going to have that hand cursor disable click sound. But we're going to jump to slide four. So at the end of each branch, they join back up together on that final bit there. Now, to make this work, to determine, you know, you could just in theory have one button that says this is the parent teacher branch, and another button that says this is the student branch. But obviously, the students um, may want to take a shortcut and choose the parent teacher path and you know, figure out all this stuff without actually learning anything. So, to protect that, we're going to use a text box, and we're just going to add that by going up here to the text button and use a text entry box. Now, it's going to place it uh, somewhere in the middle here, but we want to uh, reposition that so it makes sense here. And I'm going to use the Submit button actually as a Next button. Now, you might be wondering, how's that going to work? Well, I'll show you. Uh, so I have my text stuff here. And I have the Submit button here. Let's just relabel the Submit button to be a Next button. And that's all we really need to do there. 
And let's go back to the text entry box. So there's a few things we need to do. Now because this is a password field, you may want to check off that uh, it is a password field. The reason you would do that is that uh, if it's not a password field, someone looking over the, the parent or teacher's shoulder would be able to see what's being typed into this field. If you check off password field, it's going to replace whatever text that's entered here with a bunch of uh, asterisks, stars, uh, similar to like what you would see on your banking machine if you were entering in your personal credentials. Um, by default it creates a variable to store this password in. Uh, you can replace that by clicking on the add variable button right here and we'll call this variable password. Very simple. And of course, like with many Adobe Captivate objects, you can change how it's filled in, you can change the character, the color of the text, is there a drop shadow or a reflection and so on. I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff here, but you certainly can customize it however you wish. Um, because we're using this as a password field, the default text will be hidden, so don't bother with any default text. Um, but under different circumstances, you could put something in here like a, a queue to the user to enter something in, like enter your password here. Um, but as soon as you click this, it would just replace it all with a bunch of stars anyway. Now, what we want to do is we want to do um, an action. So on success, we want, in this case, not to continue, but to actually run or execute an advanced action. Now before we get to that, let's just go down a little bit here and, you know, I point out a couple of things. Uh, there is a, a shortcut key for enter, so if I type in my password and hit enter instead of clicking next, that will do the same thing. Uh, if you don't want it to function that way, of course you can clear that out. Also, you could uh, set up a hint. So when you moved your mouse over the text entry box, it would give you um, it would give you a hint as to what it's looking for there. I don't think that's necessary in this case. Um, you could actually uncheck show button and it would get rid of the next. And then of course only the enter key would be how they would submit their password and proceed with the course. But we're going to leave it as is because again we're going to use that submit button also as a next button as well. And how we do that is we need to create that advanced action. Uh, under options it's worth noting that of course you could um, angle this on a strange angle if you needed to or you could add audio associated with it but I don't think that's what we're looking for in this case. Let's go and create that advanced action. It's really very simple and we'll just bring this up. So by clicking the uh, the little folder icon next to the script drop down for advanced actions, this brings up the advanced actions window and we're going to create a new advanced action. It's not a standard action because there's a decision that needs to be made here. Uh, it's a conditional action so you're going to select that from there we need to give the advanced action a name so we're going to call this check underscore password and uh, when you create a conditional action it's essentially asking a question if something is one thing then do this if it's something else do something else I hope that makes sense so if well, we're going to choose our variable, and our variable in this case is password. So if password is equal to, and in this case we're going to use a literal value, and let's call it, we'll just say secret. Now you could make this case sensitive at this point and actually in a few moments I'll show you where you can set up some of that uh, functionality as well. 
So what we're asking here, or what we're saying here is if the password is equal to secret, which is the correct password, what do we want them to do? Well, we want them to go to the parent and teacher path of this course. So how do we do that? Well, in the Actions section, we select Jump to Slide, and in this case, the parent and teacher path begins with slide number two. Now, that's great. That'll get the parents and teachers, but we also want to make sure that the students are brought forward to their branch as well. And that's the else section of this, con uh, this conditional action. So let's click else, and we'll add that functionality. Jump to slide three. And again, these could be, um, you know, jump to slide 27 or jump to slide whatever it might be. Uh, depending on how much content is in each branch. So we're going to save this action, and it gives us a, a, a message, of course, that says that it was successfully saved, which is great. That's done. We can close this, and I think we're pretty much good to go. Um, a couple of things I do want to point out. We want to make sure that um, a couple of things are done. So if you click on the uh, text entry box and click on more options, you can set up some parameters for that particular uh, password. So you could say the maximum password accepted would be 10 characters long. You can also say I only want it to be numbers or I only want it to be um, lowercase letters, you know, or, or whatever it might be. I'm not actually going to um, put a maximum length on there, but I am going to say lowercase only because I, if someone has their cap locks on and they type in the word secret, I don't want them to not have access to the parent and teacher section. So we're just going to restrict it to lowercase characters and uh, and that should work fine. The other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that because you're doing a branching scenario, and this is true of any branching scenario, whether there's a password for part of the section or part of the content or not, uh, you want to consider um, your skin editor. And because uh, the skin editor sh is where you control your play bar and how it appears. So if I click on Project, click on Skin Editor, or Shift F11, I'll be brought to the Skin Editor screen. And let me just reposition this so we can all see all of it here. So there are three things that the Skin Editor controls. It controls, of course, the playback controls, which you see along the bottom of here. Now, because there's a Back and Next button built into this, you can do one of two things. You can either hide those buttons, or you could simply remove the playback control entirely. The other two areas, incidentally, that the Skin Editor controls is the borders. So in this case, if you wanted to show borders, let's bring this back for a second here. Um, oh, it's a responsive design, so I can't really change that. Um, so uh, let me take this off. Let me go into borders here. And I can actually change the HTML background. So normally when this launches, the default is this white background. Uh, you could make it like a, a dark gray or something like that, whatever you prefer. The other thing uh, is, uh, the third thing would be showing your table of contents if you have one in this course or not, and that's just simply turn on or off from there. Uh, we don't necessarily need that, so that's fine. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. So let's close that window. I think we have everything in place. Let's test this out. We'll do a preview of this. We'll do the whole project so we can see everything. And this will just give a give this a moment here. So here's our family online course introduction. Let's get started. 
Parents and teachers, enter in your password to unlock additional content so you are prepared to help your students. Uh, so let's do a couple of things. Let's just click Next and see what happens. So Next will bring us to the student branch. And this is the first slide of what potentially could be many slides for the student branch. Once I was at the end of the student branch, I would click Next and it would bring me to the conclusion slide exactly as you would expect. Let's reload this page and take a look at it again. So here we are on the parents, um, ver or sorry, here we are at the introduction again. And let's pretend that we are a parent or a teacher and perhaps maybe we're um, using a tablet. I should have resized these buttons, but I'm using a, a slightly different, a smaller device to take this training. Uh, maybe I'm doing it on my commute home after work. So I can enter in my password, which I'll just type in here, and I'll click on Next. And now I see the Parents and Teacher branch. And once I've learned what I need to know as a parent or a teacher, I can click the Next button and be brought to the same conclusion slide at the end of the course or at the end of this module. So Sue, I hope that helps you out. I hope that provides you the functionality we're kind of looking for. Um, to everyone, if you guys are enjoying the videos that I produce on my channel, don't hesitate to subscribe. And also, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up.